you're looking for an AI art platform that will rival Midjourney's quality with the ease of use, then check out Leonardo.ai. This video, I'm going to go through and show you just how powerful Leonardo AI is. It is free. You do get a certain number of generations, um, but it's actually a lot more than most of the others, and the quality is absolutely insane. The other thing is, at the moment, you do need to actually get whitelisted. So you need to just pop your email in here, and uh, you'll get white. Eventually, I'll get back to you, whitelist you, and you can get access to the platform. Now, before we start, these are some of the community images. Check out this woman's face with the soft skin. The detail is great. The picture is crisp and clean. Really amazing uh, artwork generated there. We've got this cyberpunk girl. If I zoom in, just how these images are so exceptionally clean. And then you get something like this where you have a lot of detail, but apart from a few glitches here, this is like just absolutely amazing. And check out this scene. Absolutely incredible. It's so clean, so precise, and it just has really great composition the way it's laid out. Also, we have this kind of owl that's made out of jewelry, just incredible quality. Now, we're going to cut through a little bit quickly here, but we're going to skip past these and come back to them. But we do have here AI canvas and image AI image generation. First of all, the canvas is essentially somewhere where you can generate images and then add to them. We're going to explore that. And the AI image generation, which is a simple prompt based interface with a few options down the left here, allowing you to create some pretty cool images. What's really cool is you've got your community feed here, much like mid journey, you can see what's been created recently and uh, get some inspiration for prompts and see what models have been used. You've got your personal feed. I haven't created anything yet because I've just signed up for this account. I've tested it out on another account, but I've signed up for this one. And we've got training and data sets. So you can actually create new data sets if you want to look into that and um, start to create your own AI art models based on images you use. I haven't actually played with this at all, but I might check it out in a future video. And you can check out the fine tuned models. These are models that are on Leonardo AI. So if you're creating a particular type of image, maybe it's pixel art, you can choose the pixel art model. If you're trying to create a potion, use the potions model. There's all these different models for very specific uses, including these uh, so Christmas stickers, uh, crystal deposits. And these are sort of like uh, models made by the platform, but there are also community models. So if I go in here to community models, the community have actually created some pretty cool and unique models themselves, and you can use these for your AI art generation. This is where Leonardo AI, I think, is probably the most complete and exciting of the AI art platforms so far, because it not only has incredible capability, but all these different options and features and models you can use. It's definitely a future contender. But let's go down to AI image generation and see how this works. First of all, I can choose how many images I want. One, two, four, eight. For the sake of this, I'm actually going to say eight. I've got here Skeletor playing an electric guitar. It's actually saved that from my last session, which from a different account. We'll stick with that for now. Um, although we might just say Skeleton playing an electric guitar. I can choose the resolution. I'm actually gonna go 512 by 512, just so it generates a bit quicker, but I can choose what resolution I wanna run at. This may change depending on the model I choose, and I can also adjust here if I want it to be a different width. So 640 by 512, making it four to three. I can choose my aspect ratio and it will adjust accordingly. Uh, so that's pretty cool. The guidance scale, if you've used Stable Diffusion, uh, essentially this is how close or accurate it is to what you're putting in. Too far down is uh, gonna produce poor results, and if you go too far, it's gonna adhere exactly to your results, but uh, somewhere in the middle is pretty good. Uh, I find, I'm just gonna stick with the default settings for this. The step count is actually, if I use one or two, it'll only produce one or two steps or iterations of the image, which is not gonna be great. If I put it up to 30, generally you'll get a cohesive image, and further than that, it will continue to add to the image, but it may not actually add detail. It may just simply change the image a little bit. But what's also cool is the tiling feature. If I put tile on here, I can create uh, an image that tiles like a pattern and go from there, which is pretty cool. Um, so that way, if you're a graphic designer and you want to create a pretty cool pattern, you can do that as well. I also have image to image. And if you're familiar with the idea of seeds, you can choose a seed number and use a fixed seed so that every time you generate an image, you're starting with the same foundation. So you would essentially be getting the same images if you use the same prompt. Uh, but uh, we're gonna keep pretty much all this at default and we'll explore some of these elements as we go. So we've got a skeleton with green glowing eyes playing an electric guitar. I can choose my model here. So it can be isometric sci-fi buildings or Leonardo Creative. Um, some of these are actually community models. 
I'm going to stick with Leonardo's signature. You can choose a style, like Leonardo style or none. We'll just stick with Leonardo style because that's, I think, what really makes these sort of really good. With the negative prompts, I can say no cape. So you've got the option for a negative prompt, your positive prompt. I'm going to generate. So I have two tokens and I have 250 for the day and it resets in 20 hours. So let's generate and see how we go. So now we have our images. If I click on these. I can go through. This one is, it looks like uh, some headphones or something. It's a little bit strange. These other ones with the guitar. This one here is probably the best so far. Or this one here. So pretty cool, very neon look. Uh, what I can do is, uh, I like this one here. I can download it pretty much as it is. I can unzoom the image. I have no idea what that does. But let's try it out. So you see here, I have an unzoomed image and I have the original image. So unzoomed actually brings it out. So if you're creating an image and it's cutting off various areas, you can unzoom that image and it will add information around it. And also here I can remove the background if I want to. So let's actually give that a crack as well. So now I have an image with no background. I've opened it up in Photoshop and I actually have a transparent PNG. So you've got some pretty cool uh, options here. We've got edit and canvas if I want to, as well as upscale. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to upscale this image to get the full quality version and check out the difference in quality. It's really taken that next step. And what's really cool about this is our original image was 896 by 512. But this upscaled version, if I take it into Photoshop, this image is 3,136 pixels wide. Now getting that out of mid journey would be a bit of a tall order. So you can see we create vastly higher resolution images in Leonardo AI and that upscale added to the quality very well and actually looks pretty good. It looks like a really solid generation, but let's move on. Let's bring this back to two images to save on some of our tokens and let's try a few other models to see what we get. Let's go from Leonardo signature to Leonardo select and generate. You can see now, unlike last time, it took the green and applied it to the skeleton. I did say green glowing eyes, so it's good to see the eyes glowing green. So these are both pretty cool images. One thing you may notice though is that they're actually square, because when I change the model, it actually changed the resolution to fit that model. What I'm actually gonna do now is I'm going to upscale this image and take a look and check out that. It's added a bit more detail and it's made it a pretty fun looking image, which I think is pretty cool. Now let's try that same prompt again this time on Leonardo Creative and again we get something different once more. Once again we'll upscale to see how the final product looks and again we've got something that is pretty cool. But why don't we start exploring some of the other features because we've tried the three Leonardo platforms here this Creative, Select and Signature. We can just use straight up Stable Diffusion but we'll stick with Leonardo for now because that way we can see what Leonardo has to offer in regards to its own unique platform. I'm going to go down here to Tile and I'm going to turn on Tile and then I'm gonna find a different model to try and create some kind of pattern. So I can go down here and choose select custom model. We're going to generate with this crystal deposits model. We're gonna remove our negative prompt and try something a little different. Now this is not what that model is probably designed for, but I reckon we give it a go and see what it comes up with. And you can see here, I've now got these sort of patterns. There's no face involved, but that's okay because that's not the model we're using. But uh, I'm going to take it back into Photoshop and you can see that it has tiled pretty seamlessly. So that tiling feature could be pretty handy if you want to play around with some certain features in Leonardo AI to get a particular uh, sort of pattern or effect that you want to repeat on a design or on a project. Could be really good for use in video game textures and things like that. So now let's try something different. Let's head down here, image to image. I've uploaded this alien image that I created many years ago. I can choose pose to image, which means that it will try and use the image to kind of pose what it is it generates. So I'm gonna turn that on. I'm gonna scroll up. I'm gonna say, now we're gonna go with a different model because crystal deposits doesn't really suit. Let's go back to, we can try a custom model or a community model. Let's try imaginary friends and generate with that model. We still got our image, pose to image, taking a selfie. So I'm gonna hit generate and it should produce it in this style that we've chosen. So you can see it's kind of kept the same basic sort of shape in there. Uh, obviously it's not perfect, but it still looks pretty cool. And uh, I think if you were to upscale this, it'd look pretty good, but we're gonna get so many credits. So I'm not going to upscale this one in particular, but uh, you can see how that works. And I can also then try switching back to Leonardo's signature 
and it's kind of done something funny with the face over here but uh, this one looks a bit cooler but you can see even though it has messed up and repeated the face the detail in the face is really quite really quite good and we're gonna go here to prompt generation so it'll actually produce some prompt ideas for us so let's say powerful warrior and hit ideate so I've got some pretty cool ideas here. A fierce warrior standing atop of the mountain of skulls, brandishing a flaming sword. Prayer warrior donning shining armor, surrounded by a swirling storm of energy. Let's try that one. We'll go generate. So you can generate prompts themselves as well as the artwork. So you have this Doctor Strange look like, and we've got this child here. So uh, pretty cool looking images. Um, not exactly what I had in mind, but still pretty cool so i'm going to try now i'm actually going to go back to the community tab and i'm going to try and find something as a bit of inspiration i really like this hyper realistic style so you can see uh there's a lot more sort of detail in the prompt he has used image to image i believe but possibly by the looks of it but i'm actually just going to copy this prompt it's used a fine-tuned model, RPG 4.0. So let's see what results we can get by actually playing with that prompt. So I'm going to go back to our AI image generation. I'm going to choose a custom model, RPG 4.0, which it looks pretty good. We paste in our prompt, and now we're going to change a few things. Now, this person's put a lot more effort to their prompts because they're actually trying to generate art. We're just basically showing how this works. I'm going to put a cyberpunk human wearing red sun glasses black undercut hairs I'm going to say dreadlocks headphones the cinematic light award winning masterpiece let's just stick with what we have there and generate that you can see now we've got some pretty pretty nifty results so if I upscale this image because it looks looks pretty good looks like a pretty uh, solid picture I'm gonna hit upscale and check out our upscaled image. The hair has got some great details. The eyes are looking a little drawn on, but otherwise, like the face is looking pretty good. For what it is, it's actually, it's still a very high quality render and something worth having to play with. Now remember, if you want to play with this further, check out those custom models. Got a bunch of platform models here, which look really good, really uh, eye-catching, very specific use case in some of these, such as character portraits. Uh, sci-fi buildings there's so many different styles you can play with especially when you start to go through the community models and have a look there you can get some pretty cool stuff out of that as well now one thing we can also do is I can go into this here and I can edit in canvas if I click that I get this canvas mode so that means I can actually move this change my width to the same width over here and I can add to this generation so I can say orange dreadlocks and generate and before I actually choose which one I want to go with I can actually scroll through see which one's going to suit best the first one is definitely the best of those I click accept and I can then go through and do other things I have draw mask so if I want to draw and change my brush size, draw a mask over here. I say green sunglasses on a person with orange dreadlocks. And I do believe if I just say green sunglasses on a person with green dreadlocks, I'm not sure whether this will change the sunglasses or the hair. So let's just see which one it affects. As you can see, it's changed the sunglasses, but left the rest of it unchanged. But I can also go in here to erase, and this is actually just masking only, or I can erase. So if I want to erase the background, I can do that, or mask only. I need to actually, sorry, I need to scroll through and decide which one of these I want to keep. Keep the second one, accept. And now I can use my erase tool to erase some of this as well. This time I hit bright lights hit generate and you can see it's filled in those areas I've erased I've got all the usual options over here I can choose which models I want to actually use on here because I've generated this with a different model it's cool I can use the image prompt generator to create something come in here and then just adjust it with stable diffusion and I have all the usual stable diffusion options here 
But if I'm done with this, I'm gonna say exit the editor for now. If I decide I can go back into AI Canvas, if I don't wanna work in this image, I can just click on it, hit delete, and I can actually upload my own image to work with. Now I can choose a, I'm gonna shrink this down because it is a big image. But I can choose a JPEG, or in this case, I've actually chosen a transparent PNG. And I want to change this eye. So I'm actually going to just pop the viewport here and I can actually make changes to my image. I can go here to draw a mask, make my brush nice and big. And you can see there's an ant on here. I can actually probably add to that in a little while too. So maybe I'll just have, draw some spots here and I can say a hand with a purple eye on it, ants crawling and hit generate. And now it's added the eye. It's also added a background. I can choose various generations as usual. I'm gonna stick with this one, except, and it's actually changed my image. And I can do the same thing if I want to, I can bring this down. Now I wanna try and get that to snap because I wanna add a background. So I'm gonna say here now, a wrist against a background of dirt and lava. Hit generate. And now I have these different generations I can choose from. I'm gonna stick with number three. This time I'm gonna to switch to Stable Diffusion 2.1. I'm gonna come down. I'm also going to keep this here, but I'm gonna say a human face against the background of dirt. I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but I'm also gonna draw a mask here, hoping that it puts the face on there. I actually don't know what it's gonna do, but let's hit generate and see. There is a face on there. Doesn't look great. This one here is probably the best. I hit accept. So I can have some fun actually just adding to this image and changing it using AI. So I've actually combined my artwork with AI to make changes to my own images. And you can do this with photos, artwork, um, pretty much anything you want. And of course, if you want to, you can upload an image from previous generations or from the community. So if I want to play with this image, I can also pop it in here and then have a play with that. And I can make some changes to that if I want to. I've put closed mouth, but it's produced an open mouth, so you know, whatever works. When I'm done, I can download the artwork. And you can see over here in Photoshop, I have this large PNG with multiple images on it, so I can do what I want to with that, but uh, it's a pretty cool feature. So you can see how by playing with Leonardo.ai, you can produce some amazing imagery. Uh, it takes a little bit to learn like any platform. I've just been having a bit of a play at it. Uh, I've had a little bit of a play, but nothing too crazy. But um, the artwork you can produce really is next level. I believe it is probably the main contender to Midjourney at the moment. It has the quality, close to the quality of Midjourney without having to be too technical with your, with your prompts, but also has the ease of interface that Dol that Dolly has. So it's kind of like a nice blend of the two. Very powerful tool and I highly recommend you check it out. There's a link in the description, leonardo.ai. Get yourself whitelisted and it might take a week or so and then get in there and have a play. Ton of fun. Uh, I'll be having a play right now. But uh, otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, I hope to see you again next time. Have a great day.